Hello everyone and welcome back to this Next.js and Strapi tutorial series. In the previous video, we implemented um, the job reducer, uh, which allows us to um, have a payload data, which is exactly fit for uh, our React components. And actually we tried to even launch the app in the previous version. Uh, in the previous video, we should have worked, except that we had some uh, inconsistencies in our environment variables, which prevented it uh, from working. So I'm just going to quickly show you how uh, your environment variable should look like. So you should have uh, the Strapi Assets Base URL, which we use here, Strapi Assets Base URL here, um, to add um, as a prefix to the, the data coming from uh, um, uh, Strapi. As you can see here, the URL um, for our images is based on that asset base URL because the data coming from Strapi are just um, the suffixes. Okay, so here, since you're on localhost, okay, so we're going to use this. But if we deploy our images uh, somewhere else, uh, this Strapi asset base URL may be something different. Okay, uh, so that's the first thing. Uh, the next thing. Uh, we have is the Strapi API base URL. This will, I think, this was really fine, otherwise, we wouldn't be able to do any requests at all. And then the last thing was images domain, uh, Strapi images domain, right? So, here also is the local host uh, in this case. Um, and one issue that we had which prevented the, Im the images from loading properly was uh, the fact that we were using instead of Strapi images domain, we were using Strapi assets base URL here in the next year's config right so what you want what you want to do um, to make sure that you, you can launch the app like this you have to make sure that in these three files here in this file you're using strapi assets base URL um, in this next year's config you're using strapi images domain and that in your environment variable here I'm using the example the template one because um, in the in the real one I have my um, my uh, actual credentials okay so i'm using the, the this but you you make these changes in the in the f.local file okay and you keep these values if you're deploying it locally this value should be exactly like mine here and everything should work fine and obviously when you do that you have to make sure also that you uh, restart the um, next year's application because environment variables are only loaded uh, when you launch the app and no uh, and no uh, and not, not after okay so once you do that you'll be able to uh, consume and uh, launch the application as you can see here everything is working fine we are we are able to sort by date ascending uh so descending and ascending by salary descending okay as you can see we can filter by everything so everything is working fine all the functions that you have been building so far uh, in the in the in the previous videos are working in perfect harmony you can see here we're, we're getting only the junior jobs the senior jobs senior and tech lead okay by salary range you can filter nothing is mid matching here we have a couple of matches and obviously remote only we have that also works by tax if we get tags at the, the jobs that are related to TensorFlow only, that works as well. PyTorch, that works. Tailwind, CSS, nothing. And bingo. So everything works here. So if I type here, for example, um, if I type machine learning, only the, the feature jobs should remain, right? So here, uh, I think both of these jobs have machine learning in them. Okay, so that's why I think we don't have um, anything else okay so if i go like this and i type machine learning okay if i type let's say ai engineer you see so the search definitely works right so it's just that the, the other jobs had um, machine learning somewhere in the description for sure okay so if i type tailwind you see only the jobs that are related to tailwind will remain okay so this is working fine but how about this if i click on one of the jobs see what happens you see the the the, the rich text are not pop properly passed okay so that's definitely not good that's definitely not what we want so in this video the goal is to pass the rich text as well um so as to have a final and, uh, and a beautiful uh, application and it, obviously 
going to the company page as well allows us to see the jobs that are related to a particular company categorized uh, by, uh, by a job category like you can see here if i return to the jobs and i go back to a particular job again so our goal in this video is to pass the rich text okay and we do that by using um because strapi uses markdown uh for the rich text fields so if i look at for example at this particular job and I look at the, the, the way it's formatted, you can see that it's using the rich text syntax. Okay, so we are gonna do, we're gonna use, install a package called marked, npmi marked, that allows us to very easily pass um, um, MD, MD type of data. Okay, so I'm gonna add another reducer here in this function called uh, rich text reducer. And first I'm gonna, import the marked library very good okay and i'm going to create um export const rich text reducer like this and i'm going to get as input the raw rich text field and i'm going to return the past version okay so how do we do that well we simply call them past um let me call it oops, past rich text okay equals to marked dot pass excellent and then we pass in a raw rich text okay and very simply we return it right return past rich text very good obviously we can do this in the in the front end layer but uh, we can do we can do this passing in the in our react components but remember not all um not all cmss will use the same um, um format for 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 dealing with rich text right so we want to do this in the data source layer to make sure that our react components are agnostic of the fact that strapi uses md uh, type uh, style syntax to deal with rich text okay so now once you have this obviously we need to make sure that we use this in our job reducer uh, and pass all the attributes that are uh, rich text and i have them all of them here so i'm just going to copy that quickly so it doesn't seem with me for me typing uh where's the job reducer okay it's still in the util so let's find it here somewhere job reducer excellent so we have it here like this i'm just going to copy paste it here excellent and this should work right so if i refresh again here it should definitely give us the, the, the right one but guess what it's still not working perfectly so for example normally this should be list so everywhere we have um, uh, uh, this here um it should be rendered as a list but for some reason it doesn't okay if i inspect it for example if i look at uh, which job is this the junior uh, engineer junior software engineers and so on and so forth so for example in the job description and in the about you section we should be able to see some list and if i inspect this we should see that it's actually um actually let me look at this like this okay so you can see that these are these are list indeed but for some reason uh these are not rendered as as um, with bullet points okay so i don't know why that is uh why the mark doesn't render it properly although it does render properly the uh, bold the text in bold if i go here in uh strapi and i look at the about you section you see you uh you love building grid software this is in bold okay but it's not in bullet points okay so for that we have to do the styling uh with a little hack okay so basically with that before returning the rich text like this we're going to do something interesting we're going to style it okay by replacing uh the ui the ul like this uh, by um, and adding and adding some inline style into it okay so let's do that here i'm going to do um let uh styled and i think we had the same thing the same issue uh, in contentful so past rich text dot replace i'm going to replace the ul element here with the ul element that has the style so if i do for example here already in uh 
in the in the in the front end okay you're gonna see that you're gonna be able to do that here style uh, list style type and then I'm gonna add cycle okay cycle uh, okay oops like this uh, is it working it should work normally it should work style list style type cycle mm, not sure why it's not working but it should definitely should uh anyway let's add this in um in um okay let's add this here like this and see if it works I and mean, anyway this trick worked in uh contentful because we had the same issue with contentful where this trick did not work oh come on let me move this like this excellent okay and i'm going to copy it like this okay and i'm going to replace it with um what we have here i'm just going to copy it like this very quickly let's see if it, it if it works okay so now instead of returning the rich text version i'm going to return this other version i think i can just call it const okay so let's see let's, let's refresh here let's see if it works exactly it does work now fantastic so now our trick works i don't know why it didn't work in the uh, console log uh maybe i was doing something wrong there but yeah it definitely works right so now we have an uh, about you section if you go here you see that the about you section has bullet points except having overlap with your team and so on that's the only thing that is not in, an, in, a, in a bullet point and that's exactly what happens here this first element is in bold so we are able to pass um, and display our rich text successfully um, and with that we have end the um, first uh, iteration of this tutorial where which is about building the app itself okay and so far we've been using localhost okay now in the next couple of videos we're going to do the deployment first of all we are going to deploy because you see here the contentful um, cms is also living on localhost so in the next video we're going to see how to deploy this um the, the strapi cms itself to various hosting provider like render heroku uh we're going to see the pros and cons eventually and then of course deploying the the, the, the server the strapi server itself uh will won't won't be enough we also need to deploy our um actual um, application itself to to the cloud right so we're going to use netlify and vassel for that so thank you so much for watching and i see you in the next video bye bye